You know, so we saw this video this week that's gone viral. It's these two ladies in Pakistan and they're talking to, uh, they own a restaurant, clearly a very posh restaurant, and they're talking to their manager who uh, doesn't speak very good English despite taking many lessons, as we're told. And it's gone viral for all the wrong reasons because naturally it's two women who are almost in a way making fun of his English, right? And to put that up on social media and make him an object of ridicule for anyone who watches it. I think this has completely gone the other way. It has backfired for them. And everyone's talking about what a terrible thing it is to do to anyone. I saw that video. Yeah. And it really made me shiver as well. I hate that kind yeah, of stuff. Cringeworthy it was. Yeah. And you really feel for that poor guy, right? And he's not going to say anything to them because they are the owners of the cafe, restaurant, whatever it is. Um, it is in a way humiliating someone. Very humiliating. And I think... So it's pertinent that we should talk about our views on accents and language and culture and all that. Yeah, totally aside. But your accent is also a bit of a mystery. What do you, you know, mean? Sometimes, I mean, I know you're from India and you, someone hears you, they say, oh, you're well-educated, you've studied English. Mm. But sometimes you sound like, you know, you've just had tea with the queen. And then sometimes you sound like, you you know, you've been hanging out with my mate Mohanlal, the tea stall wala. Well... One has to be given a better explanation of what you're trying to say for me to be able to understand it properly, if that is what you're saying. Welcome to the Shabby and Man podcast. We are partners, parents, podcasters, broadcasters. And everything else in between. Let's talk about this video that we saw this week. Yeah, let me just put it into um, context. So it went viral a couple of days ago and it's from Islamabad. Yeah. Where... Um, this posh, um, these women who own a, a restaurant, mm. they were basically belittling their manager mm. who was taking English lessons. Mm. And they, you know, I think the worst thing was, as you had mentioned, the fact that they put it on social media. Yeah, it was cringeworthy. It, yeah. And also because, you know, they start off by saying, we're bored. So this is what we're doing, right? Even that was that came across so badly, and it completely backfired for them. They may not have expected the kind of reaction that it got. I know. This, got, I, I think in, high, in hindsight, they said that we were just having friendly banter. He's been with us for nine years. Yeah. But it really was terrible. Yeah. It it yeah. really is insulting someone for not knowing a language, and which I, is not their first language. And I always say, never knock someone with an accent because they probably speak one more language than you. That's right. Now this story made us think about something that is very close to our hearts because um, you are a British Asian born and raised in London. I'm uh, uh, Asian, I'm Indian, born and raised in India. We now live here in London. We are raising two teenage kids, two teenage boys who are completely from here. I agree with you. But before that, I wanted to mention the colonial hangover yeah. that the people have in South Asian countries. Yes. That, uh, unless you speak good English, you're not good enough. Hmm. I think that is where the problem is. Yeah, that is a, is a problem which is extremely localized and it is typical of a, a place like the Asian subcontinent, which was colonized by the British. We must be one of the very few people in the world who take great pride in saying that we speak better English than we speak our own native language, which could be Punjabi, Bengali, Gujarati, Hindi. And it stems from a very young age because, you know, I have I was born and raised in India. You've lived in India long enough. You've studied in India long enough to know that, you know, there's this whole idea of someone being convent educated and therefore... Um, oh, you mean like in those matrimonials, like uh, fair, wheatish, convent educated, homely? Not that I've ever read a matrimonial. Uh, of but, course uh, you haven't. You no, know what I mean? Not that if you've ticked any of those boxes with me. But yes, that's what it is. You know, being... Uh, when they say that somebody's convent educated, it is immediately assumed that they are more superior than others, those who've not been to a convent school. And for the uninitiated, anyone who's grown up in India, they would know that I'm saying what I'm saying. Convent educated ka matlab essentially yehi hai ki, you know, you've been to a school where the language of instruction was essentially English. Not just the fact that you had to say the Lord's Prayer and English, all the rest English of it. medium. English medium school mein hum gaye hai, You know, that's all it means. And it's a social status, a very status thing. You know, ki bachche convent educated mein educated hai, convent, English medium school mein padhe hai. So naturally, it's something to take great pride in. And you would say, oh, my Hindi to utni achhi nahi hai, ya phir, you know. But now that India mein agar hum rehte to baat alag hoti. But so what do you mean you went to a state school? I went to the I went to a Kendriya Vidyalay KV as we call it. It is the equivalent of a state oh, school. Oh, in is India. that what they call central school? Central school. Ah. And uh, 
डिस्पाइट दैट एज यू आर सेंग दैट मेरी इंग्लिश इतनी खराब नहीं है ओनली बिकॉज माई पेरेंट्स Um, uh, both students of English literature, they went to very good schools, very good universities in Calcutta. They have a love uh, of language, of literature. Reading is embraced and encouraged in our family, and therefore, I never felt that I, I never felt shortchanged for not going to a convent school. But like, we all know that you know it is something that can be a huge chip on people's shoulder, and it stems from the fact, as you said, it is a colonial hangover. कि अगर आप इंग्लिश बोलते हैं then certain things are assumed about you, and that is what this video. clearly reflected that you know they're making fun of him because his english is not so good despite taking english lessons or whatever it is um you know i feel sorry for him because they were his bosses yeah so he's not going to say anything yeah. he just had to take it which yeah. is, which is even worse yeah and it's all about posting it on social media as a ha ha we are bored so let you know let's just make fun of this poor guy and share it with the world that was really sad now But let's you- talk about You go on. You go on first. Let's talk about us as parents raising two kids here in extremely multicultural land. Well, I've always had this grudge. Yes. Um, this chip that m- my kids, mm. our kids, yeah, do not speak their mother tongue at all. Actually, mm. yeah, they're, they're, they're not fluent. The odd word paratha. Yeah, they're not, they're not. I know they're not fluent in. Uh, what is our mother tongue? That's another question. Is it Hindi? Is it Punjabi? Is it Bengali? Yeah. but i think that's where we have an advan- disadvantage as a couple because i'm convinced that if you were married to a soni punjabi kuri you your kids would no naturally be speaking a bit of punjabi because then you would be speaking to your wife in punjabi you mean my punjabi vatti yeah whatever they're called and uh, did you say moti what forget it yeah and if i was married to a bangali bhadro lok i'm absolutely convinced that my children would naturally speak a bit more bit of bengali at least because i would converse with my husband in bengali but because we don't have that advantage you and i speak mostly in english and hindi a mishmash of both to hamare bacche kahan se sikhenge you know bachcho ko blame karna to matlab theek nahi hai na ami bengali jamai yeah the jamai rahe ho aap but mere khayal se it is also pertinent to ask that is it enough for them to know a language or is it more important for them to know a bit about their culture as well whether or not they speak the language fluently it is important for them to know their roots know the, a bit of history uh, about where they come from where their parents their grandparents their forefathers came from you know jaise hum log holi diwali manate hain diwali pe hum log har saal ikatte baith ke we sing om jay jagdish hare do they even understand the meaning they of know they the words they can Haan. play it on the harmonium and all yeah. that but i and don't think it. i don't think they really know what they're saying yeah i mean very sweetly you know the, the print outs are passed around where everything is written in english i think they can recite the gayatri mantra also they can lekin but i i am sure they haven't got a clue what it's about ha lekin and that no, is actually that's in sanskrit anyway that's in sanskrit anyway lekin literally bhagwan se aap om jay jagdish mein kya mang rahe hain kya keh rahe hain isko samajhna is also equally important i was just trying to tell you that my name is sanskrit but when i was young mm-hmm. i i learned when i was studying in this country i learned latin when i was in india i learned sanskrit of course i know nothing in either language now i'm not surprised but, but then uh, you were talking about classical languages here right i think only those who go into academia can actually benefit from knowing sanskrit and latin uh, or to read old classic books in their original form yeah beyond just the basics i was just going to say unless you become, want to become a researcher or a professor these two languages are really Now, not spoken what do our kids speak they speak the modern languages what they what they're learning in school which is what this spanish french german and i think the elder one does latin as latin well. as well so between them they speak quite a few languages lekin hame ye khatakta tha when abhi bhi khatakta hai abhi bhi khatakta hai when we would do the school run and naturally living in london you know your classmates are from all over the world so they've got it's a friends, potpourri of different cultures yeah they they've got friends who are polish they're somalian they're italian they're french and all of them would run to their mums and dads at home time and greet them in their own language and then completely lapse into a uh, conversation in their own language which our kids never did kyunki unke maa baap ne unko theek thaak se padhaya hai but kin samjhaya hai padhaya hai matlab unke bachche unke friends ke maa baap ne ha is that what you're saying yeah to ha hum logon ne nahi padha hai iska matlab blame hamare upar hi hai but anyway what is done is done um what i mean वैसे तो अगर इफ यू थिंक अबाउट रिलीजन एंड कल्चर हमारे बच्चे रिलीजन्स के बारे में दे गेट टू नो ऑफ दैट फ्रॉम फ्रॉम स्कूल एज वेल एक्चुअली द स्कूल्स हैव बीन वेरी गुड बिकॉज़ आई रिमेंबर दिस टू कम होम विद वन वीक दे लर्निंग अबाउट इस्लाम वन वीक दे लर्निंग अबाउट बुद्धिज्म वन वीक दे लर्निंग अबाउट 
Judaism. Yeah. So they so they do they know learn the basics. Stuff. Yeah. They know the basics. You know, it is a it is a scientifically proven fact. I think that if you are multilingual. then your brain is that much sharper because ye to common sense ki baat hai ki naturally if you can speak more than one language you can find out more about different cultures about different uh, societies different forms of lit- not forms but different um uh, varieties of literature and i i think the human mind is like a sponge the more that you have access to the more you learn the more you assimilate the more you imbi- imbibe um Actually, they 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 know quite a bit. Do they? I'm going to ask you now because I'm not sure if they do. Mm-hmm. Do they know a bit about? They know Ramayana, Mahabharat. I think roughly they know. They, they know what Diwali is. Yeah, Diwali, Holi, Holi, what the significance is. I think roughly a very. They do have a basic idea of what it is, and um, and. But my gripe is, I still can't watch a Bollywood movie. No, that, I, I don't, I don't know why it. Bollywood movies are the benchmark for you of learning a language. Do you think if we had introduced them to Bollywood films at a young age, do you think they would have automatically picked up? um bits about our culture humor you know desi humor is it's of not course, something that everybody grasps of course they would i mean i are they, do you think they're going to appreciate a govinda movie i no. don't think so no they would probably not get the joke any of the shole jokes either right surma bhopali basanti gabbar none of those um but uske liye i think it's still not too late you know they still might who knows kai baar aise hota hai ki after you've grown up and when you realize that you know you're somewhat disconnected from your roots they might willingly opt and choose to find out more about their that, that sounds even worse we I mean when they get uh, older they go in search of their roots they go in search of themselves as they say they'll take a gap year they'll go and try and find themselves first blaming their parents for not putting them on the right path so there you go with the whichever way you look at it you and i are to blame for this i think okay so that's enough about language culture accents Let's talk about something else which uh, we've been debating passionately because we seem to be in a minority there as well and I say minority there as well because we are clearly in a minority when it comes to parents who've not that who've not taught no their idea. children I have no idea what you're talking about I'm talking about the show we saw on Amazon Prime which everyone was slating everybody was saying that it's really bad Now Making, I know what you're talking about Yes but we actually ended up enjoying it i think because we don't watch enough stuff so we, we end up enjoying anything we watch are you are you are of the opinion that it's because we are starved of entertainment indian yeah. entertainment but we saw tandav on we amazon did. prime uh saif ali khan and uh, dimple kapadia just give people a quick background what it is for people who haven't seen it yeah it is a political thriller it is it's like a game of thrones people are saying house of cards more uh, yeah but it's about wo uh, gaddi par kaun baithega ha it is about that love of gaddi it is about uh saif ali khan and dimple kapadia they all belong to you know the same political party but there's this i mean constant tussle for power and all the things that go on behind the scenes in a political party so it is a political drama and the reason why people made a beeline to watch it virtually the moment it started streaming was because this is bollywood director abbas ali zafar's no ali abbas zafar's first directorial uh for a streaming platform is he the guy who did um, tigers in the hay tigers in the hay he did tigers in the hay he did uh, sultan he did it did bharat he does a lot of salman yeah, khan he's movies yeah he's a salman khan uh, guy. Uh, guy so we watched thunder and the first thing that caught our eye was uh, was the wardrobe i think the the clothes well, i i just love the clothes you know there's something about ethnic clothes about the the pajama kurtas the band galas the sh- sherwanis the nehru jackets the churidar it's a different class it's so nice and of course the the sarees were also top notch very very beautiful you know and uh, i was going to say fab india type but then it was subarna re choudhary who's known for she's a bengali designer and she's known for her eth- her love of ethnic prints and ethnic weaves and i thought the There wardrobe was a statement jewelry as well statement jewelry color combinations i think the wardrobe was absolutely phenomenal saif ali khan great clothes horse oh, yeah, yeah. all of raghuvendra rathore's i know he was he was jackets. he was dressed very rajasthani royalty type yeah and he carried it off rather well because i think i have a sneaking suspicion they shot it in his palace of patodi that they was did, another they did, yes yeah so he was virtually shooting a drama at home and must have felt very much at home as well but um did you see what, a swimming pool in that yeah that we oh the marble with the marble inlay is that what you the one you're talking about that's one that's his own pool i presume what is your assessment of tandav the story the drama all the episodes how it ended where it ended 
What do you think about it? I really enjoyed it up to probably the last or the second last episode where mm. I felt that they're rushing it mm. and there were a lot of um, loose ends at the end. Yeah, some things happened very rapidly, right, at the end. But I enjoyed it and it was what, eight, nine episodes and it took us a weekend to watch it, two days. We watched it in yeah, two days. They weren't that long actually. So they weren't that I think long. it was nine episodes. But yeah. now Tandav is embroiled in a controversy because people in India, one section is saying that, you know, it's hurt Hindu sentiments. Uh, there are certain scenes that should be taken out and they have agreed to take them out. So that's opened up a whole new can of worms. It's brought back into focus the debate about censorship in India. For anyone who doesn't know, Tandav actually is the dance that Lord Shiva did, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, the dance of fury. The dance that, of that fury. Yeah. Lord Shiva did. So um, now that Ali Abba Zafar ne wo scenes nikal diye hai Tandav, see, people are talking about censorship on digital platforms. And you mean once it starts, there's no stopping it? There's no stopping it. I think this is the first one that Amazon, this is on Amazon, isn't it? It is on Amazon. It's, it's probably one of the first ones that Amazon, Netflix and all have agreed to yeah. make cuts. Yeah, because on one hand, people who are part of the censor board, they are saying that, look, th- these streaming platforms, they have a free hand, but they themselves should have a body where you sit down and you decide that this is allowed and some anything beyond the realms of this should should be censored, right? In the interest of uh, of public, what would you say, morality? I don't know. Yeah. But then the, you, on the other hand, you've got people like Pritish Nandi. I was reading interviews with Pritish Nandi who did four more shots, please. Many, many other. Renu Kashane, who's just done Tribhanga. All of them are saying that no, censorship is absolutely suicidal for any creative person and if Indian dramas have to compete on a world stage then it's going to be the bane of Indian entertainment but in truth you and me know this is not about uh, censorship this is politics it is politics you and know, it is about it's, it's, it's too much janjit you're going to get harassed and yeah. no, it is about, all that kind of stuff these, you might as well just say okay I'll cut the scene let me be like in these creative people are saying that now that the winds of change are blowing they're saying that this is about moral policing which the state should not do. They're saying that if you look at the UK, you look at Singapore, you look at so many other countries, they've got laws in place, but they are the, unless something threatens the national security and integrity of a country, they say that censorship, especially in India, censorship laws in India are completely outdated. They're prehistoric, out of the window. So Tandav has brought that debate back, uh, where, in, it belongs. back where it belongs in the public domain. And people are debating this and they're saying, going forward, you know, whether if you have another season, I know Sacred Games is not coming back, but Mirzapur, and we know that all these dramas. Every single drama, if you think about it, has yeah. had some backlash. Yeah. Didn't even uh, Churels in Pakistan yeah. have that yeah. they had to take all out? all had, absolutely. Whether even though it was an Indian streaming platform. Sometimes it is fundamentalists who say that they've gone too far. Sometimes people say that there's been too much skin show. Sometimes people say that it's against our culture. So there have been all kinds of lobbies which have raised objections. But I think Tandav is the first time that the makers have actually agreed to make those cuts. And that's why we're talking about this. Um, I do hope, um, we know that there's going to be a season two, right? Because that was another problem we had with Tandav. One key question was not revealed. That's why I said there was too many loose ends. There was one, no, but there was one particular one. You know, you can't just give us a clue every single episode and then not answer that one crucial question at the end. And people were saying, oh, that's because they left the door open for season two. But I don't think that's the way. That's, that is that is leaving people on a cliff edge, but also leaving them extremely disappointed. Uh, another great thing, uh, it's got Sunil Grover in it, huh. who everyone knows from the Kapil Sharma show, mm. you know, doing what he does. Mm. But here he plays something totally different yeah. against type, and he's very good. He's very good. That's what he was saying, that when Ali Abbas Zafar offered, offered me the role, I had to ask him twice, are you sure? Because normally I'm, you know, playing the buffoon. This is completely different. And even Dino Maria. We saw Dino Maria after years, right? He gave up Bollywood a long time ago. And now he's come back in a completely different avatar. And it's done extremely well, I think. Well, that's it for the show then. Yes, that's it for this podcast. Do you know where to find us? Yeah. Do you want to tell people where? Uh, at all remember? the usual places. Uh, uh, Spotify, when I said, you want Google, to okay, yeah. iTunes. Uh, and please do leave us a review or a comment. Follow us. Tell your friends about us. Uh, we would be so grateful if you um, did a bit of publicity for our podcast. And you could do that by listening to us and telling people about us. Till next time. Bye-bye then. Bye.